Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today we're taking a look at riser pads, specifically the real um, 1 8 inch uh, wooden riser pads. This has been something that a lot of people got hyped over for some reason. Um, I'm not really one for like, you know, backing brands or like just being hyped on random products. Um, I did initially think this was a pretty neat way to like, you know, use scrap wood for something. Um, but there are some issues I have with the pads, but we'll get into that in a bit. Now to start off, uh, they come in three different versions. You have the Thunder version, the Venture version, and the Universal version. The one I had got was specifically the Thunder version. And I've been using them with the Thunder Hollow Lights 1 c 9s um, with 1 inch, one inch hardware because these thunders have a thinner base plate um, because it's the forged version. Now, according to my measurements, they're actually a little bit under um, one eighth of an inch. Um, not by too much where you might notice a notable difference, but uh, smaller nonetheless. Now, reason I believe the reason for this is because the plies on the riser pad um, aren't actually the same size. Um, the the riser pads are three plies, um, but when you actually take a closer look, uh, from what I've s observed in my experience, that two of the plies are roughly the same size, while the third one is a lot thinner than the other two. Um, I don't know if this really means much, but it does mean you don't get consistent sizing. Now, if you're wondering about the size comparison and consistency to the other, like, riser pan brads out there. The Bones one is actually about the same size, if not the same. That's the uh, 1 8 version. So if you're one for extreme specific measurements, just know that it might be a tiny bit smaller than eighth of an inch. We're talking about like maybe small like hair size or fingernail size difference. Now when I did get these right off the bat, I noticed that they were kind of warped. Uh, I'll show you in the video right here where you can see that they're still bound together but there's a little space between them and if you squeeze the pads together you can see that the pads are actually a little bit flexible uh, because they're a tiny bit warped but when I actually put them onto my board um, they didn't really like, change the performance or whatever that warped uh, pad didn't like ruin the board like the feel of it or whatnot it did its job which is increasing the space between my truck and my deck now I've noticed people saying how it changes the pop feel with wood versus plastic, but to be honest, I didn't notice any change. My board still felt like my board, you know? And really that's all a riser pad is supposed to do. It just, you know, increase the distance between your truck and your deck so you can use bigger wheels without risking wheel bite. Um, there's another couple options just like um, pop feel or whatnot, but that's a whole different video topic. Honestly, my biggest concern about these pads were what they crack, what they like uh, pressure crack, splint, something like that. And from what I can say from doing like slappies, doing a couple of stair sets or whatnot, uh, these have held up pretty well. I haven't noticed any notable damage about these riser pads. Sure, maybe the bolt holes got a tiny bit bigger for us from the nature of skateboarding or whatnot. Like, you know, you're abusing your truck a lot and all that force has to go somewhere, you know, and then those holes are going to take some of the abuse. But um, it's nothing that will make the pad unusable, if that makes sense. So, yeah, honestly, between, you know, um, the wood and the plastic ones, I didn't notice any difference between, like, how they performed, which is, you know, you put it under your truck or like how it made the board feel. It honestly made the board feel the same. But honestly, what really gets me is uh, the price and the option choices. So what these, uh, for a set of the plastic bones ones, it's what, two to three dollars about. While for a set of these guys, it is eight dollars, at least from my shop. Um, maybe sh other shops might charge a bit more. And you also get uh, less options with these in the sense that 
uh, the way it works with trucks. Now with something like this where it has the longer holes, you can adjust it to fit your wheelbase, not your wheelbase, your truck base plate because all the base plates have different sizes uh, varying from brand and you know a design like this is really really great for adjusting to that base plate. While for these guys you need to buy different versions so you know you get the thunder one for the thunder base plates and it works really well but then you put that thunder uh, racer pad onto the venture uh, truck and you'll notice that it doesn't have a perfect fit where this end sticks out a lot more and then there's a lot of space underneath uh, here now it doesn't mean you can't use them obviously you know it's a riser pad it's going to do its job um but that's just a thing to consider where it's not going to be perfectly flush underneath that base plate you're going to need to buy a different version uh, for our different trucks so if i want to get a set of these for my venture trucks i need to cough up another eight to thirteen dollars for a set of that and if i want to get them for my indies again i have to buy them again then i'm gonna have three sets of ri different riser pads for three different set of trucks while if i just get the normal plastic ones like these bones ones i can just adjust them so they fit perfectly with the venture base plate or the thunder base plate or the ace base plate or the indie base plate or any other truck base plate which is why this design is really, really good. And they're also a lot cheaper. So if I wanted to get like, what, three sets of these, uh, that's what, $21. So, well, if I want to get like three sets of these, that's like nine to $10. Honestly, I just see better value in these guys, you know? Would I recommend them? I mean, honestly, it's just a riser pad. I'm, not, I'm really not sure what you want me to say about them uh, or if I would recommend them. They just work. They do its job. They haven't broke on me. Uh, it, I would say maybe if we were more into into the aesthetic choice of it because honestly the way the um the way the wood just goes against the wood just there's just something about it that seems really neat um uh, but it's more of an aesthetic choice more board styling or whatnot not something that would actually affect, affect the performance um, and I know people are going to talk about like how the single holes are better than the long holes. And again, it's personal preference. Different things work for different people. Everyone's going to have their opinion on like, you know, what riser pad is the best? Is it this one because it has the more small secure holes? Is it this one because you can adjust it to different trucks? Me, to me, it doesn't matter. I always check my um, hardware before I go skate to make sure everything's tightened down. And as long as it does its job at um, you know at a decent or fair price, I'm all for it. You know, uh, to me um, personally, I wouldn't get these again just be just because I already have riser pads, uh, the universal fit. I have what um, eighth inch, quarter inch, and half inch the mini logo and bones ones, and I honestly don't have a need for these riser pads because riser pads are reusable, and if you already have something that works, there's just no reason to like buy another set so yeah that's my review of the real uh, uh, one eighth riser pads the wooden ones they just work that's all i can say about them if you think i left anything out or missed anything just let me know in the comments below and i'll see you in the next video